Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I would like to talk about one of my favorite exercises while I'm doing my most recent one on the screen. As you can guess, I'm talking about painting master studies. I typically save them for those times when inspiration isn't showing up, but I still want to paint something and be productive, or for those days when I really want to focus on learning a specific aspect of creating a painting, but I still prefer to save them for when coming up with ideas is harder than it should be. And that's probably the main reason why I like them so much, and it is because they help me getting out of art block while learning new skills. My goal is never to have an exact replica, and I never really would paint the whole painting. I would simply choose a portion, the face or mostly the face, because I love portraits, but maybe the hands or something else, and focus on that thing I want to learn from it. I like different artists for different reasons, so I paint with that thing in mind, and the rest to me is not so important. The painting that I'm studying here is from Edmund Turbell, and it's called Preparing for the Matinee. Matinee. What drew me to it the most were the values and the very desaturated colors, so I put my attention on that. I chose to crop it down to basically the portrait because I didn't think that I would learn that much more with the background since it's basically flat. I will insert a photo of the original painting somewhere here. There are many ways to approach this and to start, and I don't believe there is a rule that must be followed. I don't think there are rules in art. I like to learn things and techniques from different artists, but ultimately adapt them to suit me and my way of painting. When doing a portrait, I like to first make an accurate drawing, so that when I'm painting I'm not second guessing if this feature goes here or if this eye is too low or too big or whatever. And to me, this approach frees me up, so I do it always unless I'm painting and still life from life. Then I'll roughly draw with the brush and I'll paint. But for portraits, I almost always draw first and then paint after. I do this in Procreate because it's more convenient to me and I can do it anywhere. And then I transfer the drawing to the canvas. In this case, it's a prime sheet of linen. And then I start painting. If you want to study the painting technique of a specific artist, you should research how he or she worked and what type of layering was used if at all. For example, when I did Bouguereau's portrait study, I wanted to get some sense of his layering method and glazing techniques, so I did some research and tried to kind of replicate it. But of course with my limitations in accurate knowledge and materials, because I don't use any mineral spirits or turpentine or gamso, I only paint with oils and safflower oil or linseed oil to keep it toxic free, or well, rather fumes free, because I will use cadmium here and there. What I realized painting that one was that working many sessions with thin layers to build up the flesh, it doesn't work that well for me. In the case of this painting, that's not my concern, so I'm going about it as I feel. Sometimes I paint with a couple of layers and others a la prima, depending on what I think it will suit best. Also, depending on how much time I have for that painting, uh, sometimes I would like to have several hours to work wet in wet, but if I don't have them, I have to think of a different way to get similar results. The most important thing is that you focus on whatever you want to learn, rather than on the final result being perfect or very accurate. Although obviously we all like getting good results, but that should only be a bonus if achieved. If it doesn't look great, but I learned something from it, then I don't consider it a failure or a waste of time. It's just something I won't share on the internet and most likely will end up on the trash. I think social media makes it look like everybody paints amazingly well all the time and that couldn't be further from the truth. It's just we only get to see the pretty pieces artists make, but they all have lots of artwork that wasn't so great and they just don't show it. I would suggest you do the study in the same medium it was originally created, because if you're trying to replicate the brushwork or thick old paint, you won't achieve it with watercolors, or you may have a harder time with acrylics because of the drying time. This, of course, depends on the focus of your study. For values and composition, for example, you can use any medium, my favorite being probably digital. 
is just so convenient and clean. Digitally, you can also study old paintings or pastels quite easily. The look of it, I mean. Watercolors, not so much, because they are quite unpredictable and hard to replicate. I also want to add that I personally don't worry at all about speed while painting. If I was doing thumbnail studies, maybe I would time myself in order not to spend half a day on a tiny square, but otherwise it's not something that bothers me. I paint for as long as I feel the painting needs. I recommend to search for good quality photos of those paintings that are big enough and well defined. I usually pick mine from Google's Arts and Culture, I will leave a link below. They have excellent pictures and you can get really close to see all the detail and brushwork. Some suggestions to study are composition, color palette and color relationships, value, shapes, brushwork, technique. But it can also be very interesting to emulate another artist's style with your own concepts and ideas. It's something that I want to try, I want to do. I want to create my own painting based on this study that you see. More or less, I only want it to kind of resemble a little bit. And that's it. I would like to know if you found it interesting or if you actually try and do your own master studies and if you find it useful or what it is about that you like. That's all from me today. So have a nice day. Bye.